During a zombie apocalypse or any other time, you'll want to find free dispersed camping so you can get away from people and zombies. I'm Kristen. Welcome back to Travels and Travails where we help you live life off the beaten path. Last year we did a five week camping trip in our Casita trailer and I wasn't really sure how to plan a trip that long because I had never done it. So the first thing I did was I had to do a little bit of research to figure out the best way to plan the trip. Dispersed camping gives you the freedom to camp in beautiful and quiet places. But how do you find these coveted dispersed camping sites? The biggest hurdle for me in planning a trip was trying to figure out how to map it. Now back in the old days, everybody used paper maps, but today, you know, we have technology. A lot of people like Road Trippers and Trip Wizard. Now I've never used Trip Wizard, but I use Road Trippers and it just doesn't plan the kind of trip that I like to take. If you like to go to campgrounds and visit attractions like that, then it's a good option. But for me, I like to live life off the beaten path, so I wanna find these dispersed camping sites. I tried Google Maps, and Google Maps has limitations. There's only so many destinations that you can put in until it just cuts you off. Before we started to map the trip out, I had to figure out where we were going. If we had to leave for the zombie apocalypse, then I would certainly want to find dispersed camping, and that's what I like to do anyway. So, we went to Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, and Glacier National Parks. I know, I know, not exactly dispersed camping. <laughs> I should make a video. Why Doug hated Yellowstone National Park. Anyway, that was a framework for our trip. We had those three national parks that we were gonna go to, and then I planned the trip around that because that's what I wanted to see. So I used that framework to find campsites along the way that were off the beaten path. So we have AAA, and I'd used AAA triptychs before. I mean, we even back in the day when triptychs were on paper, I've used them before. But this time I was using the online triptychs, and that really worked out. Now there is a limitation to how many destinations you can put in, but it's a big number. So our whole trip fit into one triptychs, which was really great. For me. So after I figured out a general route of where we we're gonna go and found the places that I wanted to visit, then we had to find the campsites. If you don't already know this, famous national parks are incredibly difficult to get into. Fortunately, I have Camp Nab, so with Camp Nab, I was able to get two of the three national parks. So I was able to get Grand Tetons, a campsite inside Grand Tetons, and a campsite inside Glacier National Park. Yellowstone, people just snatched them up before. I wasn't fast enough, that's what it was. It's not that I didn't have the option to get them, I just wasn't fast, I wasn't quick enough on the draw. Anyway, I also got into a couple state parks with Camp Nab that I wouldn't have been able to get into, including Escalante Petrified Forest State Park, which was really amazing. There was a lake, it was better than I could have expected. So in between the national parks, I researched some tentative things to do on route, and I found some really great opportunities. I was pretty excited about it. So in order to find those campsites, and now I'm talking about campsites off the beaten path, I use Campendium. And Campendium is my favorite app for finding campsites, whether you want to go to an RV park, you want to go to a national park, or any other campground. Campendium has a wide array of sites available, including free sites. And you can search just for free sites. So I really like that. A lot of people like the dirt and I've used the dirt a little bit. I think where the dirt really shines is if you get the paid version, they have a few more options for you to work with that Compendium doesn't have. I tried it for a little while and it was great. I really liked it, but it wasn't enough for me to want to continue to pay for those particular features on the dirt. So I also use iOverlander. So iOverlander, if I cannot find uh, anything on Compendium, then I will turn to iOverlander and maybe on occasion the dirt, but I find that most of the things that are in the dirt are also in Compendium. So there might be a few differences, but not that many, but iOverlander has a lot of off-grid sites. And some of those sites are four-wheel drive 
compatible so you have to have four wheel drive or high clearance so you really have to pay attention to that. Now the difference between Campanium and iOverlander is that Campanium information is very much vetted. So the company comes up with all the information and then users put in additional information like they may tell you what the Wi-Fi signal is in a particular campground or they might just do a review on the campground and give you more information on that. Where iOverlander is completely input by people like somebody finds a dispersed camping site they log into iOverlander and then they put the information in so you're just taking the information from that one person on that particular site and so there's a little bit of risk to that I know that it's not that people are dishonest but you know conditions change. Maybe when that person was in there, that site was copacetic to be able to camp at, and maybe it isn't now, or maybe they thought it was and it wasn't. So iOverlander does put a disclaimer out for you so that you know if you use it, you really have to double check to make sure that you're supposed to be camping there. I just want to mention free roam, freecampsites.net, and the boondocking app. And I do use those from time to time. I'm usually pretty successful between Campanium and iOverlander and then the other ones that I'm gonna tell you about in a minute here. So once I find a site, the next hurdle is to be able to get to the site. And so one of the other planning tools that I use is the Gaia GPS app. And so it kind of has a dual function because for me, the Gaia GPS app, I pay for it. And it's so worth it to me because if you are outside of the Google Maps realm, you may have a hard time finding a site that you just have GPS coordinates for. But if you plug in your GPS coordinates into the Gaia app, then you'll be able to find your site. Now, you can get a free version of the Gaia app, but you don't have the ability to pre-download maps. So if you are outside a cell phone signal, you won't be able to find your location. So what I do with Gaia is I preload those maps that I know I'm going into that area because again, that's part of the paid version. So I can navigate to that location. So the other thing about the Gaia GPS app that I really like is that if I find a campsite, I mark it. So it's kind of a two fold win-win app in that you can na you can use it for navigation and you can also use it to save campsites. And I use it for both those things. And these are the kind of sites that you want during the zombie apocalypse. You want the ones that are way off the beaten path. I found the route to Escalante Grand Staircase on overlandtrailguides.com. Now this has all kinds of trails from very, very difficult four wheel drive Jeep trails all the way down to very easy trails that you can take your camper van on. So we found that the Escalante Grand Staircase trail was, was rated easy, but I still had some trepidation about it. In fact, I felt very anxious about it because I'm responsible. Both of our casita, Doug's casita, and it's my casita too, but if something happens to the casita and it gets damaged because of a trail that I picked, that's my fault, that's on me. So I wanted to make sure that the information that I got on overlandtrailguides.com was correct. And it, not that they put out bad information, but again, trail conditions change. So maybe a flood came through and wiped out the whole road. So I went to the ranger station and if you find yourself in that situation or if you don't even know where to camp, you can go to the ranger station and they'll give you ideas. Just say you want to be off the beaten path. Hey, where can I go? You can also call the ranger station ahead of time. If you can't find anything on an app or if you don't want to deal with an app, just call the ranger station for the area that you're going to and explain your rig. Tell them what type of rig you have. Tell them you want free dispersed camping and they'll set you up. So I went into the ranger station and I talked to the ranger station and I'm so glad I did because she told me that there was one road and she said there's no way you can take your casita on that road. Now <laughs> the rest of the trail there was some part of the trail that we went on that she thought we could make it and we wouldn't do that one again. I'll, I'll tell you that for sure. But the one that she told us not to go down, I remember, was Left Hand Colette Road. So Left Hand Colette Road, we ended up dropping off the casita and then we took the truck on Left Hand Colette Road just for fun. So anyway, that was the beginning of my learning Gaia GPS. And so it's not that hard, really. <laughs> but 
you know, it, there is a learning curve to it and I recommend that you check out some videos before you use it. So I used Gaia, the Gaia GPS and I had already downloaded the maps for the area from overlandtrailguides.com. That's one of the benefits that you get. So the maps I downloaded onto the Gaia GPS and then I just had to navigate them and it really wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Some people like Onyx for navigation when they're off the beaten path, but I am just, I was already familiar with the Gaia GPS app because I had used it hiking somewhat. I want to tell you something, and this is important. When you're off the beaten path, you may not have cell phone signal. So one of the things that we have is the Garmin inReach, and it has a little SOS button. It, it's not, you can't just accidentally hit it. But if you're in trouble, that SOS button will send for help. They'll call for help, and it will give them your coordinates so th it'll know your location so that you can get help. We've never had to use it, but I think it's a really important safety net if you're getting way off the beaten path. Now, if you're going to places where you know you're going to have cell phone range, and like I said, you can check that on Compendium. If you find a place on Compendium, it'll generally tell you what the cell phone signal is in that area. And then it's not as important to have the Garmin inReach, but if you're going way off the beaten path like we do, then you want to have that safety net. Now, I understand that iPhone is also coming out with or has come out with a phone that will do the same thing that works through satellites like the inReach does and that's great too so it's probably going to be more expensive <laughs> than the Garmin inReach but that'll work for you as well the other thing we do that again this is so important if you don't hear anything else I say right now if you're going off the beaten path or even if you're not you know, you're just going on a camping trip. Tell your friends or family where you're going and give them the itinerary. So my itinerary, before we leave, it's all written down. I know some people don't, they fly by the seat of their pants, but either give somebody your itinerary or notify them what location you're going to or what location you're in so that you have a loved one that knows if there's an emergency and you have a problem, they know where to find you. I can't stress that enough. So I give our itinerary to my daughter and also to my sister. So two people have it and will be looking for us if we don't come back <laughs> or if there's a problem or if we're out of touch. So when we were on our trip in Escalante Grand Staircase, I went hiking by myself. And the reason why I went hiking by myself is because we went to slot canyons and you can't take dogs in slot canyons. So I really wanted to go and Doug didn't care and it was hot. So he stayed in the car with the dog and I went on a hike by myself. And fortunately I had his backpack because Mr. Prepared, he had a boatload of water and you're supposed to take a gallon of water and I thought oh my gosh a gallon of water that's so heavy that's like eight pounds I'm not carrying a gallon of water but he had a lot of water in his pack and he had the 10 essentials so he had everything I needed and I'm glad that I took his pack because I've been kind of lax lately after the situation I repacked my pack and so I have everything I need now but I got lost and I thought I was going to spend the night in the desert and it was really scary. It wasn't, the trail wasn't well marked. I was really surprised. Most of the trails that we go on are well marked, but this is the desert. And so there isn't always a good way to mark the trail. And I got lost for a long time. And it, fortunately, well, first of all, Doug knew where I was, but I didn't have the Garmin inReach with me. And that's another thing I won't do again. If I go off by myself, I'm going to take that Garmin inReach with me because I, if I hadn't figured out how to get back, I would hit the SOS button and somebody would have came looking for me. Now, again, Doug was there and he knew where I was going, so he probably would have called in the troops, you know, if it had gotten dark and it was getting very late in the afternoon and he was worried. So fortunately, I was able to, uh, I kept walking. I think I was probably walking in circles, but then I heard voices. And so I had somehow gotten up on top of the slot canyons. And so there were people down there and they were coming up. I don't know, probably to go to the bathroom or something like that. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm lost. Where am I? And they said, oh, you're in the slot canyon, you know, follow us back. So I followed them back as far as I could. And then I followed another couple and I did, I was able to get out on my own, but it was a very, very scary situation that I don't want to be in again. So I just wanted to share that with you about, you know, safety how important safety is. And if you want to see our trip to Escalante Grand Staircase, check out this video.